Hey everybody, this is Nintendo Soldier welcoming you back to Pikmin. In the last episode, we took care of Emperor Bulblax and got the last part and went back home. And in this episode, we're going to do some bonus content. Alright, so what we're going to do for today is we're going to take down all the optional bosses. And there will be a few moments that are just like boring of me just plucking or throwing. So I've already taken the liberty and sped those up. So that... So that it doesn't turn into like a 32 minute long video of me just plucking and sprouting. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to a day that is 15 or lower. Preferably one with the distance ring unlocked and there's really no enemies. Alright, so we're going to take on the ultimate enemy of Pikmin. Yes, that enemy. That enemy that shall not be named. Alright, but I'm going to show you two ways to defeat him. One being the non-reward way and the other being the tough but rewarding way. Alright, so first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the way that you can defeat him without actually waking him up, I guess, is the best way to put it. Alright, so what you wanna do is you wanna take out all your blues, all the blues that you can. Alrighty. So now we got all our blues slowly coming out of the onion. Alright, all 100. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to that egg that I mentioned uh, the other day. And those guys can just go eat that bridge because I don't need it. Alright, so here is the egg. And what you want to do is you just want to swarm it with all your blue Pikmin. Yes, that's right. Swarm it. Swarm it. And it will go down so fast that it will not have a chance to hatch. And what will happen is that there will be nothing. Now, this isn't really the best way to do it, but I guess you can do it if you um, don't want anything to disturb you or anything. So, yeah, that's a thing. That's how you defeat the ultimate enemy without actually letting it hatch. But, that's not so satisfying, so I'm actually going to take him on. Yeah, I'm going to take on this enemy. Alright, so let's go back to the distant spring and take on the Smoky Prog. And yes, that's what his enemy name is. Alright, so the actual strategy to defeat this, you're going to need all the reds except for 10 because they can't survive in water and that's how you initiate the fight all right come on guys we got a big battle to prepare for preferably you would want all flowers but since I flowered before the boss fight that is not necessary for me because I've already done that now you're gonna want to position them towards the yellow onion and blue onion side like right around there. Okay, then you're gonna want to take out 10 blues. Okay, now that's done. Now we're gonna do the same thing as before, but since we only have 10 blues, it, the, they will not be able to uh, crack the egg fast enough for the smoky prog not to hatch, so it's gonna hatch this time. All right, go my blue Pikmin. Crack open this egg. All right, and it's gonna hatch. There is the ultimate enemy in Pikmin. That is, that is it right there. It's the Smoky Prog. It is a poisonous enemy, and poison Pikmin were not discovered yet. So you gotta be extra cautious. Usually in Pikmin 2, you will have your Pikmin be suffering before it dies. Not this case. It'll die instantly if it even so much as sniff in the poison toxin okay what I usually do is I put those two ten blues back in and then I take ten more reds out because I need all the power that I can get now what's it gonna now what it's gonna do is it's gonna head to your base to your red onion and it will what it will do is it'll position itself right under the light what that'll usually do is it'll uproot any Pikmin 
but since it has none to uproot, it'll just leave him exposed and ready to be killed. Alright, so he lost one already. That's not too bad, I guess. But yes, that is why this guy is so dangerous, is because that no Pikmin can survive its toxic sludge. Come on, come on, come on, guys. Come on! Alright, didn't quite take him out there. And oh, crap, 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 crap. Run away, guys! Run away! It is very good to be maneuverable, especially when he's chasing after you. But if you don't quite do it on the red onion, it'll be alright, because he will do it on the other onions as it's shown here. It'll do it on the blue and the yellow as well as the red. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, another death. It's okay, it's okay. Oh, 15. Still doing alright, I guess. Alright. Sometimes it'll chase after you as it's doing here. It'll just won't leave you alone and do a roar attack, so you're gonna have to like go out of base a little bit. So that it can do its roar attack. And <laughs> Smoky Prog used roar. It was super effective. Alright, so now it's doing it on the yellow. So it has done the roar attack on crap. On all the onions, and I just had like a 20 Pikmin die right there, and no, no yellows. Stay in your onion yellows. Sometimes it's really hard to hit the Smoky Prog because it's under an onion. So, and when a Pikmin hits an onion, it'll um, bounce off out of control. But yeah, that that's something I need to worry about. Alright, let's take up more red since to make up for the numbers that we lost, because we have so many of them. And this guy gives out such a big reward it, that if you can stay under 100 deaths, it'll be well worth it. Alright. Come on, big Smoky Prog, do your worst. Actually, you probably already have done your worst. Come on, do your roar attack. Do your roar attack and great. Four more deaths. I believe if there's any Pikmin that are that are uh, rooted to the ground on the way to your base, I believe that he'll do the roar your roar attack there too. But you know, since most Pikmin will be buried underground near the base, that's why they put him put him to go after that right there. All right, go, my Pikmin. Kill this, kill this jerk base person. Whatever. All right, almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. Come on, Pikmin, you can do it. I believe in you. Do it. And he's dead. Yes, finally. All right took about six minutes not too bad but now he's dead all right and he leaves behind a gold pearl now this gold pearl it's pretty cool you know those pearly clam camps gave you the silver pearls that give you 50 yeah well this one sprouts 100 pikmin yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and pluck these but it'll be fast forwarded so i will be right back And I've plucked all the Pikmin that I can, and it looks like that the onion can sprout 100 because there was the Pikmin were out in the field a second too long, so that's okay. But yeah, we got a whole nother generation of red Pikmin. Alright, so that's one of the more, t that's like the toughest boss of optional bosses. So now we're going to go to Sunset, and we're going to do a little bit of exploring in the Forest of Hope. Alright, we don't need to see this. So we lost 47 to that Smoky Prog. So we made up for half of that. I don't know, it's, some, it's a cool little secret. I kind of liked it, actually. Alright, next we're going to go to the Forest of Hope, as I said before. And do some exploring, because there's a few changes that I would like to go over.
Alright, sorry about that jump cut, just something happened to recording, nothing I can really do. But anyways, here we go, the Forest of Hope. Alright, so this is, there's no optional bosses over here, but I just want to explain like a couple things about this area after day 15. Alright. As you can see, their enemies have all regenerated, and this guy is here. Yes, after day 15, there will be a swooping snitch bug over here. So that's really one reason why you want to take out this area very early. Also, there are more spotty bull bulborbs, making this area a lot tougher. So that's another reason why um, you want to take out this area quickly, so that no more bulborbs can regenerate over here. Alright, then coming over here, near those, near the Snagrit's den. The Snagrit that had the ship heart will not be here. So if you were looking to destroy this guy for pellets, he, there will only be two over here. So you can't count on a third, and die, Wogpool. <laughs> we don't need you to become Wallywogs. Alright. Otherwise, all the enemies have regenerated because we haven't been here. Alright, now going over here, there's that, okay, there's a, another bull board over here that wasn't here before, so that'll make this area infinitely tougher, and that somehow wakes up, even though it was just a sheer grab, I don't know how that works, I guess that's why they put him there, so that you can wake up. Alright, go back to sleep, nobody wants you. Jeez, you guys wake up really, really easily. Alright. Coming over here, these guys are now back, obviously. And hey, look, it's that red Pikmin that I couldn't sprout before. What a coincidence. Looks like he did get saved after all. Alright, so now we have a total of 700 Pikmin, wow. That is a lot. You don't need 700 Pikmin to finish the game, you can have like a low amount, like some players like to do that, but that's not my playstyle. I like to like bring all the corpses back and get a lot of Pikmin. I know that's not the ideal speed run, but it's something. Alright, so over here, this guy however, instead of, unlike the Snagrit, he's back. So if you want an easy 50 Pikmin for, from an easy boss, that is a good way to do it. In fact, I think it's easier than the Pearly Clam Clamp, so... You just come keep revisiting, sir. You can get 50 Pikmin and get a lot of Pikmin fast. Alright, so that's it for the Force of Hope that I wanted to explain. Alright, this is just talking about the Iridescent Flint Beetle, none lost, but we got one gain of Pikmin. Hooray. Alright. Next up, the impact site. You'll be visiting here twice. Alright, here we go. Now what you're going to want to do for this day is you're going to want to get out all the reds that you can. And... I'm going to be throwing him onto a ledge, so that's going to be a lot of Pikmin to throw, so I'm going to speed up that that part as well. So, as soon as I get all my Pikmin, I will see you guys in just one second. Come on, come on. Alright, see you in one second. Alright, and all those Pikmin are up there. Now this guy is the Mimuta. Guess what? This is the parent of that smoky frog that we faced earlier. Except... Instead of... Instead of uprooting, he roots him back into the ground. But what's even cooler is that he flowers any Pikmin that go into the ground. Pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Although this guy is annoying if he gets all your Pikmin to... In the in the ground, because it's so much harder to take out, because there's only a few Pikmin attacking it. 
so that can be annoying, but that's really the only reason why you would do that. Oh, and he hurts Olimar a lot. For some reason, he doesn't hurt the Pikmin, he just really hurts Olimar a lot. And if you do get rooted into the ground, um, then then you can just shake the nunchuck to get out of it. But anyways, we have to pluck these guys, so be back in one second again. And uprooted everybody. Alright. Now, Mumido will be here on even days, starting on day 8. This other boss that we're going to face is going to be started... It will start coming on odd days, starting on day 9. So that's what we're going to do next, is fight the odd-numbered boss, I guess. Alright. By the way, that Mumida gives 15, which is the equal amount of his body, Bull Bear. Alright, back at the impact site. Now this time, you're going to want to get all, out all blues, because we're going to be taking on water for this boss. And you're going to be thinking, hey, there's only a little lake over here. How can you possibly take on a water boss if there's already enemies back there? You'll see in just one second. Alright. And again, we have to throw Pikmin onto a ledge, so... As soon as we get out all our Pikmin again, I'll be right back. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Alright, got all the Pikmin. Now see you in just one second. Alright, and that's done. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to throw Pikmin in the middle, and... Yep, that's what I meant by taking on water. This is a water enemy named Gulix. It's just a living mass of water. What you want to do is you're going to want to go to the opposite end of the battlefield, and you will stretch out. Once he does that, you're going to want to attack the brain. His brain will then collide with his pearl that's right there, and will take massive damage. That is the easiest way to take on Gulix. Lots of people think that you have to mass attack the brain, but no, you don't. You just have to make sure it stretches out to a distance where you can hit the brain and cause massive amount of damage. I don't know why people keep um, saying swarm the brain, but I guess that's one way to take him out, but it's not like the most the most uh, ideal way, I guess. See, look how much damage he took just from that stretch. Oh, and don't let Gulix touch you, because it will hurt him. Now this is treated as a, like a water hazard, which is why I said you need to bring all blues, because other Pikmin will drown in this. So yeah, the reds get an optional boss, and the blues get an optional boss. But yellows get screwed out again. Alright, that seems to be the running theme of this. Now strangely enough, Gulix does not return in Pikmin 2. But then again, so doesn't the Smoky Prog, but the Mimuda does, so... It's kind of weird how that works. Alright, it's almost done. At this point now, I'm just gonna swarm the rain. I know I just said not to, but he only has a little bit. And dang, those water graphics. Now he'll drop five pellets of a random color. So, that could be 20 Pikmin if you put them in the right color. Alright, but anyway, that's been all the optional bosses. <coughs> Alright, and back here. The pearly clam clams each have regained a pearl, even the one with the positron, positron generator even has a pearl. So you can sprout 150 Pikmin, and using the grass, you can get mostly flowers. So that's a good strategy to do if you need Pikmin. But anyways, I believe that's it for all the optional bosses. Uh, next time, you will take on challenge mode. Um, the alternate scenes are not going to be played in this bonus episode, I'll make a third bonus episode for that. So yay, you guys get more content! Because I can't find them in my stupid computer. But anyways... Uh... Yeah, that's pretty much it for this bonus episode. I don't really have much else to show you in the ways of optional bosses. 
But anyways, let's save. And next time on Pikmin, on bonus episode 2, we'll be taking on challenge mode. See you guys then.